I am willing to guarantee after you listen to this, you will only tell yourself positive stories. I'm willing to bet because after you understand the, the vast impact that stories play on our success, on you achieving the life that you want, you'll never tell yourself a negative story again. What's going on fam welcome back to another week on the mentality of success i am joshua washington and this week we're going to get into some science don't you like science <laughs> most people yell no we hate it <laughs> i promise you it won't be the boring variety but the idea for this uh today's topic which we're talking about how the stories we tell ourselves either lead us to success or prevent us from success and how there's science that backs this up. It's not just motivational talk, but I'll give you kind of some of the backstory. Well, first off, this, this started last week. Last week I was in another state doing some training, uh, training some executives. And meanwhile, back home, there was a storm taking place. We had a hurricane coming through. Thanks, Nicole. That's the name of the storm, by the way. There, there was a storm coming through that caused all the flights for me to come back home to be canceled. So I was a little bit stranded out there in Georgia, but it gave me some extra time to, to catch up on some reading. And can I just tell you that I, I believe now more than ever that the separation for those who, who want to elevate their lives, take their lives to the next level, take their careers to the next level for that matter, the separation is going to be two things your ability to focus and concentrate for a long extended period of time and the stories you tell yourself because that directly shapes our mentality. We talk about the mentality of success and if you've read the book, you'll notice there are a lot of stories in there. Why? Because stories, stories eventually they attach themselves to our reality, which the progression from there after they attach themselves to our reality, they become our identity. And that's not Joshua's, you know, knowledge or wisdom. It actually came from this book I was reading. I, I want to read it verbatim so I can give them credit. This is from Marshall Rosenberg. And what he says is so true. He says, our personal reality always contains a story. And the stories we live beginning from infancy. That's why we teach our kids through stories. We can't teach them through just decoded language. We have to put it into a nursery rhyme or put it into a song because it needs to tell a story in order for it to engage their brains. And it doesn't change as we become adults. So beginning from infancy, our reality and the story we live is based on language. And that may not come as a, as a surprise to some of you, but it's easy to forget this stuff. Like last week I got in trouble because by my mom, I was talking to her on the phone and I said something that I thought was so simple. Like literally all I said was, I'm a mess. And my mother stopped me dead in my tracks and said, don't you say that? You're not a mess. And she, she gave me a, a good lecture <laughs> by reminding me who I am. And that's how easy it is that we can, we can allow that little crack in the brain to start telling ourselves the wrong story. So what did I do? I turned around and did the same thing to my wife. <laughs> she came home one day and what did she say? She said something about this is going to be the death of me. And I was like, hold on. My mother just told me and I'm going to tell you the same thing. Do not say that. Do not tell your, yourself that story because it will, it will in fact affect your health. And so what do you, Josh, what do you mean with all this? What I'm saying is I want you to consider what are the stories you're telling yourself. What are the stories that for years you've been telling yourself? Because I can guarantee you, if it's a story that's been recurring in your life, you will find the evidence of that story in your life as well. Good or bad. Good or bad, you will find the evidence of that story. And here's some of the science behind it. I was reading this article from um, the, the team, team Buffett, and I want to make sure I give this guy credit because I don't like to... I don't like to speak on people's work without giving them credit. His name is Leo 
Whitrich. I thought he did a fantastic job in kind of laying out the science on, on this uh, experiment that they did where they took a bunch of people and they started telling them stories while scanning their brains. And what they found is, like, as they were telling them the, this story, it was different from, like, if I got up in front of you and I did a PowerPoint presentation. That's just inf informative. So you would just take it at face value as words. But when you tell a story, it engaged. So let me back up. You would just take it as face value as, as just words, and it would only engage a small portion of your brain. You contrast that to stories. When we tell stories, it engages and activates our entire brain. So for instance, last week while I was out of town training, the night while I was having dinner, I called my wife so you know we can have dinner over, over video. And I was eating, <laughs> I was eating some, I need to go back to that place. This was some of the best French fries. And my family, we're French fry snobs. So this was some of the best French fries I've ever had. You know, sometimes when you get the, the, the thick, like, steak fries, they, sometimes they're a little bit too potatoey. But these were perfect, man. They had that perfect crisp on the outside, like the air crisp, and then perfectly, you know, just soft in the middle. And I'm sitting here explaining the same thing to my wife, and she's giving me an evil eye. Because why? I could have just said, "Hun, the fries are good. But because I told her a story about the fries, what it began to do is, Instead of just engaging her, her auditorial cortex, which is what happens if we're just listening to a presentation, it began to venture into some of those other sensories and her mouth began to water. And when she heard me chew down and heard the crunchy airiness, she began to covet my fries. <laughs> she begins to be jealous and want my fries. And the point is, that's a small, silly example to, just to show you that the stories we tell we also feel. I could tell, that's why when we watch movies and it's telling us a story, it'll bring us to tears. That's why when we watch a scary movie, it'll, it'll, we talked about this a few videos ago actually, it'll start to engage other cortexes of our brain and we'll start to be afraid of things that aren't even in the room. And the same is true when it comes to to the stories that you tell yourself and the stories that you believe. And that's one of the reasons why I'm not a fan of trying to convince people that they are lesser than, for say, for say an example I've heard that, and I feel like I've used this example quite often a lot lately, but I think it's, it's in our society. It's, it's being talked about a lot. When you, when you talk about critical race theory and all this stuff, one of the dangers in people believing that they are, that others are against them is that if that's the story you're telling yourself, that's going to become your reality. And all you're going to be able to see is those who are against you. You'll never see those who are for you, which means you'll miss out on some of the, the networks and relationships that will actually advance your life. If you come from, you know, a place that is considered, uh, a impoverished city or environment like I did, if you tell yourself that that's all you've, you've come from and that's all you, you, you can know, then that will be your mindset. You'll grow up pinching pennies and chasing money because you believe, or because in your, the story you're telling yourself is, I don't want to go back to that. If you've been hurt and someone's spoken lies over your life against your value, and you've allowed that story to replay in your mind, then you will never be good enough. If you believe the story that you can't achieve that business venture or whatever that thing is, or if you keep telling yourself it's gonna be hard, the truth is it may be hard. But if the story you're telling yourself is that you can't, you're not adequate enough to meet that challenge, you will never meet the challenge. If you're telling yourself you're enough, you're the community you're a part of is under-resourced and that means you can't make it out, you'll never make it out. The stories we tell ourselves become our reality. And I want to say it the way that, that Marshall Rosenberg put it. So I'm going to read this to you verbatim because I was sitting on the plane and I'm reading this and I thought, man, that is, if we could just get this part, we could change 
whatever we wanted to change. Listen to this. It says, we are not our stories. The stories are self-created, meaning we've made a lot of these stories up that we tell ourselves every day. There's, they're self-created fictions that remain intact. Get this, through habit, group, uh, through habit, old conditioning, and a lack of self-awareness. So habit meaning we believe this story, so we take these actions. If I'm telling myself a story that there's nothing in life to really be excited about, that I don't really have a purpose, that I don't really have value, then guess what happens? My, my habits begin to align with that. And I wake up more tired than I did the day before. And I don't have any drive to get out and do anything. And some people call that laziness, but I don't think it's laziness. It's just someone that is underneath the spell of a negative and life-destroying story, which I would say lie. Because stories can be lies as well. And so it says our habits and then our old conditioning. Meaning that your story and your circumstances that you can see from your eyes match. And so it conditions you to believe it. And the last one is self-awareness. Not being aware of the stories you're telling yourself. I can tell you for a, a good portion of my life, I believed I'd never, never get married. I believed I'd never live in a nice home or a nice neighborhood. And for a short while, I believed my life wouldn't really add up to much. Because I was you know, far behind a lot of the people I was looking at. And these stories are detrimental. And so this upcoming year, here's something I want you to think about. We got six weeks left, so you have plenty of time. What are the stories you're telling yourself? What are the stories you were telling yourself and allowing yourself to continuously believe about you, about your situation, about others? We haven't even gotten there yet. The story you believe about other folks can cause you to judge them unfairly and miss out on relationships that will add value and richness to your life. What are the stories? Because I guarantee you, whatever success you're looking to reach in your life, if you want to, if you're serious about getting there, you better find the supporting stories. My wife will tell you, I don't, I don't tell myself many bad stories. I will pull up at Publix and tell myself I have a parking favor. Some of you have no idea what that even means. It just means when I pull up, somebody's pulling out because <laughs> that's the story I, I tell myself. And every time I pull up, there's an open parking spot. It's that powerful, y'all. I speak, I, I say the same thing about business. I have deal. I have, I'm going to get a lot of deals. I'm going to be able to help a lot of people. I'm going to and want to have a great marriage. I want to be a, I'm, I'm going to be a great friend. Why? Because, it doesn't, not, not because it's true now, but because that's the story I'm going to keep telling myself so that my habits so that my conditioning, so that my awareness aligns and only sees those things. If you're telling yourself you're a victim, you're only going to see life through victimhood. If you're telling yourself that you are oppressed and that the world is against you, you're only going to see the world at, in this defensive mode. If you're telling yourself that you're unlovable, you will always your habits will always follow actions that make someone unlovable. Whatever you tell yourself, the stories we tell ourselves become our reality and eventually become our identity. That's why there's so much confusion going around around us because people are walking around telling themselves lies and those stories are becoming their identity and it doesn't it doesn't work. It doesn't lead to anything fruitful. And so that was a learning I had this week. And you know I like to share those learnings with you because if it's helping my life, I believe it will help yours as well. So as you go on this week, remember, think about the stories you are telling yourself. What are the stories you're telling yourself and how is that embedding itself into your habits, into your conditioning, into your self-awareness? What are you saying in your day-to-day? -day? Are you talking about your job being the 
or, or, or your circumstances beating you down? Are you constantly saying how tired you are? And how you never have enough energy or interest? I can go on and on, but I'm not. I think you get the point. That's all for this week, though. I hope this helps, man. I hope this is very valuable. If so, send this to someone else and help change their story so you can change their reality as well. All right? I love you all, and I will see you all same place, same time next week, reminding you that success is your destiny. To the next one.